Sports science and sports medicine degrees are among some of the most popular courses at colleges and universities these days, which makes competition for jobs and internships intense. Often jobs aren't even advertised, but if they are, then you just know that they are going to be inundated with applications for people competing for that one role, which means you need to get your CV and covering letter absolutely spot on. Now, sometimes people think the covering letters aren't even read. Well, that is the first step that is selling you. And so I think they're crucial. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the five biggest mistakes that I've seen people make when applying for sports science and sports medicine roles on their covering letters. My name's Jo Club. I am a sports scientist and I've worked full time for more than a decade across the Premier League, the NHL and the NFL. And now I consult to teams and organisations all around the world. My goal today is to share these five big mistakes that I've seen on covering letters to make sure that you don't repeat them. The fifth biggest mistake I see on covering letters are these basic grammatical errors and typos. So you might think spelling there or there or making small typos really doesn't matter. What matters is your experience and what you're saying. Well, unfortunately, when you are faced with a pile of CVs and covering letters of applicants, you are looking for any excuse to get rid of people. And of course, in sports science and sports medicine careers, attention to detail is really important. So for me, if I come across a grammatical error, then that is a, an easy excuse to pop someone on the no pile. So check, double check and triple check your covering letter for any kind of typos or grammatical errors that you might have made. Mistake number four is being a super fan of the team. Now, don't get me wrong, being passionate about the sport and being knowledgeable about a team can be an advantage for sure. And I myself, my first role was at Chelsea Football Club, which happened also to be my childhood team and my family's team. But you have to show restraint and professionalism because you're going to be working with these players. They're no longer the players on posters on your wall or on the name on the, on the back of your shirt or jersey. These will be your work colleagues. And so if you give over this impression through um, your covering letter that you are an absolute super fan of the team and you know everything about the players, that in fact is going to be a turn off for teams recruiting in these sports science roles. Mistake number three is making the length of your covering letter either too long or too short. Your covering letter is an opportunity to highlight your most relevant experience and explain how that gives you the prerequisites needed to do the job to a really high standard, to explain what makes you valuable. But the length it takes you to explain that is really key. As I already described, most people doing the recruitment for these roles and internships are facing a stack of covering letters to get through. If you have written an essay two or three pages long, that is gonna be off-putting to them. And it's also gonna suggest that you can't get to your point in a succinct manner. Conversely, if you're just putting a paragraph in your covering letter and pointing to your CV, you're not making the most of that opportunity to highlight and put valuable messaging across through your cover letter. So just like Goldilocks's porridge, you want the length of your covering letter to be just right. And for me, that is perhaps three paragraphs that is definitely sticking to one page. The second biggest mistake that I have seen on covering letters is just repeating the content of your CV or resume. So as I just said, the covering letter is a real opportunity for you to sell yourself 
And just by repeating what's written on your CV is not making the most of that space. For me, you want to use your covering letter to highlight the most important parts of your experience. But most importantly, you want to link it to the specific job description associated with the role that you're applying for. Remember, this is your sales pitch. This is you selling yourself and the value that you can bring to that team or organization. So take what they are looking for and what they are expecting this individual to do in the role and explain how you can fulfill that to a high standard. And finally, my number one mistake that people make on covering letters, getting the name wrong. Look, let's be real. When you're applying for these jobs, often it is a time of the year where perhaps you are applying to multiple jobs. Perhaps you're even applying to lots of different teams across the league. So yeah, I understand that you're going to be writing and printing this out for lots of different people, but you absolutely have to make sure you have individualized it to the correct team and the correct individual. As soon as someone receives a letter with the wrong team mentioned on it, then that is a great excuse to put yet another cover letter on the no pile. And the same goes if you are addressing the letter to a particular individual, which I do suggest you do, whether that's the performance director or medical director perhaps, find out who that individual is and make sure you get their name right. And as someone who is a female called Jo, but I appreciate that Jo is often a male name, if ever I receive a letter that is addressed to a Mr. Jo Club, again, for me, that person goes on the no pile. It is a reflection, again, on attention to detail and the care and consideration that you have put into your application. So my number one mistake that you should avoid is making sure that you get that name of the team and the individual that you are writing to correct. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please hit subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for another Sports Science Insights video coming soon.